Look, this is a British passport. Well, have you ever seen a lion with a crown on its head? What is this? Walt Disney or something? The lion is not only a symbol of the nobility related to Pharaoh's Sphinx, but more specifically, it symbolizes the old world order, the vertical rule of the monarchy, and Red House of Bertasser of Lower Egypt. And why does it all say in French, Oni soit qui mal y pense, meaning shamed be whoever thinks evil of it? So, Oni soit qui mal y pense, shamed be whoever thinks ill of it, here it says. Now, what do they mean with it? I will, I will explain you exactly what the it is. Well, Oni, first of all, is Old French for shame or to be ashamed in French and they call it la honte nowadays for for shame and oni to be ashamed is written with two n's nowadays in nowadays French and the motto is by the noble order of the garter from April 23rd 1348 which is only 34 years after the Knights Templars were burnt in 1314 in front of Le Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. And French has always been the language of the nobility worldwide because it was in France that Rome's pharaonic elites could escape to after the Germanic tribes conquered and defeated Rome in the year 450. Even at the royal courts of Russia and Germany, French was spoken. So, in the crown, on top of this pharaonic crest, is a Templar's cross. And right under, another one with two fleur de lis next to it. Meaning that Little Britain is a constitutional monarchy with a horizontal rule, Republican New World Order Templars Constitution, and the Fleur de Lis for the Old World Order Vertical Rule, where they all came from. So here on top of it, you know, you see the Templars Cross. You know, it comes out of a pyramid, which I show in my videos. And, um, and in my video, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, the quadrilogy, the 13 hours, I explain that the, uh, so the Swiss beast, home of the devil, I explain that the Knights Templars, they made the new constitution, the Republican horizontal rule. And this is why it shows here, fleur de lis for the old world order of the kings, the monarchies together with the new system. And that's why the Templar, Templars cross is right next to here to the fleur de lis so here you got the the new world order old world order new world order and so forth and so on because they divided the power you know to better have a better control over their slaves and here in the middle it's all red for the red house of pharaoh the pertasser where they all come from originally and the the old world order is red that's why here it's a little bit of white, you know, because this is the new world order on top of that. This is the white house. So this is the red house where they came from. And here you got the white house, the new world order of upper Egypt, the bare head. So the whole crest symbolizes the union of the old world order vertical rule of the... Um, aristocracy and the new world order horizontal rule of the Knights Templars and therefore saying shame be whoever thinks evil of this union it means the union of the old world order and the new world order into a united kingdom of both of them and only for this occasion, the Order of the Garter, 
like a sort of United Nations police within the nobility to calm the warring fractions internally. And therefore, the Order of the Garter, they were, it was founded right after the official dismantling of the Order of the Knights Templars on March 22nd, 1312, at the Council of Vienne in France. I went filming for you there. So here you see it. The, uh, the Order of the Knights Templars is officially suppressed on March 22nd, 1312. And here, two years later, they got burned, or just, just a couple of them, only like 25 or something. And here you can see it, the Council of Vienne. Uh, click on it, there we go. And um, other principal acts of the Council of Vienne was to with, withdraw papal support of the Knights Templars on the instigation of Philip IV of France, Philip the Fair after the French monarch attacked Rome and killed Pope Boniface. And then he had, of course, the, uh, the Pope come to, uh, to Avignon because he was afraid that the Knights Templars would kidnap him. And instead of that, well, I told you, they, um, they founded Protestantism as another uh, religion to... to to um, to attack the French king and to uh, to weaken him, and you know this all happened right after or right before, right after this, the uh, the Order of the Garter was uh, founded. The belt in blue, meaning a war against us, the slaves, in the UK crest and the royal crest, is in the form of a circle for the uh, compass, the concept of three, referring to them, our masters. Also to be found at the logo of the Order of the Garter, with a red cross in it, referring to the red cross of the Knights Templar. So if you see someone walking around with this on his robe, like in your child's favorite Harry Potter movie, and you know this aristocrat in particular is both a royalist monarchist and a republican templar that he sees the union of the old world order with the new world order as the only solution to hold pharaoh's internal wars to better rule over the slaves in this still very feudal system Oniswaki Malipans, be ashamed, who thinks evil of it, who thinks evil of the union of the old world order and the new world order. Look, this is all in French, but don't worry. It says here, date de création, 1348. That was the, the founding date of this order here which I've already shown to you. So the French called the most noble order of the Garter, l'Ordre de la Jarretière. As Jarretière is this typical garter around the upper thigh, which prostitutes use to seduce their customers, just like this evil band of pharaohs use to seduce us into believing all their accumulated lies. Or how these pinkless killers dressed up in female clothes with a lace ribbon around their thighs use to seduce another bloke. Well, I hesitated to show you a picture of the latter, but well, why the hell should I? Now that's probably why in German, the whore of Babylon is called die Bullerin meaning the seducer, which funny enough, a high member of Octogon taught me in Switzerland. Here's the word, Bullerin, and here, die Bullerin. And in English, die Bullerin gets funny enough translated with 
the courtier, le courtier, another French word of our beloved nobility, and which means a person who attends a royal court as a companion or advisor to the king or queen. Well, the seducer, die Bullerin in German. Therefore, the same unicorn as in the UK crest is one of today's main logos for the pink list killers. Because the unicorn of the United Kingdoms has a crown full of Templar crosses, not on its head, where a crown should be, but around the neck, and with a phallic symbol at the place where the crown should be. Because one of the symbols for the Knights Templars are two poor aristocrats on one horse, two poor aristocrats sharing, needing to share one horse. So when the Templars got part of the cake through the Order of the Garter and also ruling over the English slaves, well, they finally had enough wealth for every Templar to buy himself a horse. So you see a whole busload full of garters. It says garter, garter, the lingerie, you know. And this one is even, well, that doesn't look like a woman. Eh? So one of the order of the garter, he, you know, he sneaked into it here, into my video. So as vulgar the nobility can be, when there are no cameras in the vicinity, they said, now the unicorn. For every dick, one horse. When the union of the old world's order and the new world's order took place through the combined order of the garter. And the unicorn was born with a huge phallic symbol on its head. Sorry, people, I'm terribly sorry of all the difficult pictures you had to endure. And that was the end of the poor nobleman needing to share one horse due to the laws of the primogenitor within the nobility. So to the left in this union, and therefore the UK United Kingdoms, is the monarchy, therefore saying in French, Dieu est, meaning God and. Here, Dieu est, God and. This is the monarchy. Because the monarchy is called le droit divin, the divine right of kings. And to the right, under the new Templar horse, it says, mon droit, my right. As the Templars took their own rights. Mon droit, under the Templar's horse. The whole thing represents the union of the old world's order with the new world's order, under the control of the most noble order of the Garter, with their lace pink list killer, Jarretière, on their thighs. As it was common knowledge, that the Templars were pink list killers and Satanists. So here, this is from Wikipedia. Let's go to this one here, charges against the Templars. And this has all been written down, people. This is no, this is not Walt Disney or, you know, this is the real thing. There we go. If you want to read the whole thing, you can punch pause. Yeah, the brothers. So the uh, it is a fraternity. The brothers were required to deny Christ, to spit on the cross, and to place three obscene kisses on the lower spine, the navel, and the mouth. They were obliged to indulge in carnal rela relations with other members of the order. Sounds very much like Freemasonry today, doesn't it? Now, eh? But they come out of the Knights Templars. Carnal relations with other members of the orders, if requested. 
And finally, they wore a small belt or a garter, the Order of the Garter, which had been consecrated by touching a strange idol, which looked like a human head with a long beard, well, and so forth and so forth. Look at the chain here. The horse is chained. The Templars are chained. And therefore they are chained. As the new Uni Templar horse has a chain around its neck. Which has been broken now. As the Nordic and time wolf Fenrir. Being unchained in the Rauner Rock. Like the Templar horse unchained. Finding its way into our children rooms, being adored by our children and by the pink list killers as their obvious symbol of the satanic pink list killer Templars here in a school for children and probable pale whores of the apocalypse, which we can witness unfolding before our very eyes today. With their political wing, the Freemasons, giving all the orders to be locked inside and take the needle like a snake bite, which will destroy you from the inside out, as this terrible enemy has always been doing, fighting us from the inside, behaving as the poison that they are, being the only true bug in the whole shebang, truly snakes that they are. Why do we let us get terrorized by a bunch of pink list killers who wear a garter lace on their upper thigh? Even the King of the Netherlands, whom you can see here, belongs to the Order of the Garter. And that's why his country is the number one pink list killer nation in the world. And I truly hope he's not going to lift his Harry Potter robe and show us his jarretiere garter in lace around his upper thigh which was exactly one of the charges by the French King against the Knights Templars, which they all practice nowadays. So honestly, what normal man puts a lace garter around his upper thigh, eh? And did the French King lie, saying the Knights Templars were Satanists and pink list killers? No, he didn't lie, and he tried to protect and save the people who are now under total attack by this evil. These are no real royals, as they made an alliance with the pale horse. In order to survive, they sold their souls, which the King of France didn't want to and preferred to die, instead of selling out his soul to this evil and to the devil, and which literally happened. The French royals and their descendants got all butchered and entirely an annihilated. Except a few who managed to escape to South Africa, to a place called Franz Hoek. This is why Disney in 2020 came out with a film entitled Secret Society of Second Born Royals, being a reference to the Knights Templars who were second-born nobility and all their secret Freemason societies coming out of them, the second-born Templars. In the United Kingdoms, preferably in plural, because that's what it is. They even have a government equalities offices to shove us their pale horse agenda down our throats. Yeah, well, don't worry, you know, they painted the horse in black here. But if you look again at the crest of the United Kingdoms, that is the Templar Kingdom and the Royal Kingdom, Le Droit Divin and the our rights and the uh, 
it, it is in fact a white, a pale horse. They all know it's people. Like here at 20 minutes, this princess calls the worldwide nobility one big family because she knows that the word pharaoh etymologically comes out of the demotic words per a, meaning the big house, as in a royal house or one big family, as she says. The film is interesting, only the title is misleading. The Vatican belongs to the Swiss Nazi Templars and their pharaonic nobility, and definitely not the other way around. Eight years ago, in 2013, I made these two videos on my channel Gatsefrats, and exactly explaining the future situation which has become a reality today. And I already knew back then that their aim is to make us infertile, about which the visual proofs I filmed on this satanic ritual site here. In this video here, filming their agenda of infertile women, only able to give birth to skeletons. And through their rituals, and human sacrifices in front of these statues, portraying their agenda, they mobilize demons that will make you believe their media and their bug war propaganda. And here I visited the castle of Champlit a few weeks back, where I took some bad quality pictures because I couldn't use my camera where you can see how Pharaoh's nobility depicts us, their slaves, in a perverted manner, making fun of us, like showing the animals genitals. All this so-called art of our masters and their charming offspring has a meaning and a reason. Like this cage for humans with four circles on top holding the prison together for the Freemason concept of three and four, for square and compass, keeping the lid on. Or this bench in the castle's courtyard, with a sign for keeping the distance, where on purpose they wrote the word person in French with three N's, for the concept of three, referring to them, our masters, who are the only real persons on this prison planet in their eyes. And the concept of four refers to us, their slaves, where they can put their person with three ends and royal asses on the four planks of the bench. This is why the German people abolished the nobility in 1918, after the horrors of World War I which was a war by the European nobility, pushing the Europeans to kill each other. Here it says, this is from Wikipedia, in August 1919, at the beginning of the Weimar Republic, from 1919 to 1933, Germany's first democratic constitution officially abolished royalty and nobility, and the respect the respective legal privileges and immunities appertaining to an individual, a family, or any heirs. So, if you want to read the whole thing, well, you can find it in Wikipedia. Yeah. So here in Wikipedia, the abdication of Wilhelm II in 1918. So after the German Revolution from 1918 to 1919, the entire German nobility was taken off their titles and aristocratic rights. Here it says the German Revolution. I can click on it. There you got the German Revolution. And they, the, the most important thing of it was the um, 
you know, the aristocratic population, they, you know, they got taken off their rights. So it needed another world war to put them all back in the saddle, this pharaonic nobility, and crush the hated Germans and the rest of them recalcitrant Europeans in another terrible world war. And for this occasion, the old world order, the royal nobility, needed the help of the secret society of second-born royals from the motherland of all evil and octagon utopia of the Knights Templars in the Alps of the Swiss Nazi Templars, thus leading into the same union of old world order and new world order, the uniting organ of the most noble order of the Garter already established on April the 23rd 1348. The German nobility had to do that now, as they had no more choice. And here you can see it here. This is Klippertaler from 1693 from Germany. And it says on it, in Germany, on soit qui mal y pense. So it has the same idea of unifying, but they don't know it, you know. Shame, shame on him who thinks ill of it. The precise details surrounding the origins of the order are not known, but several myths attempt to explain it. All of these legends involve a garter band, you know, Templars, eh? that was one of the charges, which has become a symbol of the society. This garter inscribed with the order's motto is still worn by members during official ceremonies. See the pink list killers, they got this garter, jarretier, around their leg, eh? So here it says, you know, this is from Germany, yeah? Oni soit qui mal y pense. Ein Klippertaler. There you go, people. And also here again in Wikipedia, the order of the garter. If I scroll it down here, yeah, look. Uh, ladies of the Garter. Yeah. Degradation of members. So, you know, during the First World War, two royal knights and six stranger knights, all monarchs or princes of enemy nations, and including Wilhelm II, the Emperor of Germany during World War I, and Franz Josef, the Emperor of Austria during World War I, Remember, the Austrians, had, they had a huge army. Eh? They were struck off the roll of the order or had their appointments annulled in 1915. Now, even, even the emperor Hirohito, he was, you know, he was uh, part of the, uh, the order of the Garter, a member. So the emperor was particularly pleased by the restoration of his banner as a knight of the Garter. Uh, in 1971 by Elizabeth, eh? And um, so they all were, you know, and, and this, is, this, is, this is the mere reason of the Second World War. You know, that the, it, it was an internal war between the Old World Order and the New World Order. And the, um, so the, um, the Old World Order, the German nobility, they wanted to get their rights back, you know, and uh, because of this, we had two world wars, people. And therefore, already before 1933, when Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany, no less than 3,592 princes had joined the ranks of the Nazis. So, not just 3,592 normal aristocrats had joined the Nazis before 1933. No, 3,592 princes, the highest of the highest and full-blooded pharaohs and direct descendants of the German emperors had joined the Nazi Templars because they wanted their power back which they all lost in 1918 
with the abdication of the Emperor William II, not being able anymore to parasite on the German people. So there were hundreds of thousands of aristocrats joining the Nazi party. And this is from Wikipedia, it's very interesting. Here it says, 3,590 princes joined the Nazis before Hitler came to power in 1933. So you can imagine how many aristocrats there were. Uh, because this, these were princes, people, princes. They were the sons of emperors and kings, yeah? Not some duke or some count or, you know. This is very important to know this, people. And I don't see any jaywalkers here, eh? No jaywalkers. It's the nobility, eh? Pharaoh did it. And so not too many members of the German nobility would die in World War II. Hitler proceeded with the so-called Prinzenerlass, that the nobility didn't have to join real combat units in the German Wehrmacht, and instead of that massively joined the SS for the goddess Isis in Demotic, with their skull and bones Freemason logo, also used by the pirates, who were of course a Templar fleet against the British Old World Order before and before the Order of the Garter. Here you can read it. Prinzen Alas in German, Prince's Decree, also spelled Prinzen Alas, was the name of a 1940 decree issued by Adolf Hitler that prohibited members of German Germany's formerly reigning houses from participating in any military operations in the Wehrmacht. There you go. You know, they were just kept out of it. And they all went into the SS, you know, killing like soft targets, genociding people and whatever, you know, and whatnot, eh? So back to this Wikipedia, former German nobility in the Nazi party. I already showed it to you just before. But here, when in 1940 Hitler issued the Prinzenerlass, prohibiting German princes from the Wehrmacht, but not from the Nazi party, the SA, Sturmabteilung, or the SS, the Schutzstaffel, and some German states provided a proportionally higher number of SS officers, including Hessen Nassau Lippe, von Lippe Bisterfeld, is the Prince of Darkness, and he spent the war in England together with Ian Fleming, yeah. And such German princes included like SS Obergruppenführer, which is a general, the higher SS police, and the uh, hereditary Prince of Waldeck and Piermont. You know, all these pharaohs, they went into the SS people. Why they could do some real good genociding, eh? And do the good killing on soft targets. So therefore, the German nobility massively joining the SS, who were more a political and racist army, eliminating soft targets like genociding local civilian populations and even terrorizing the Germans themselves. And this guy here, it's a prince, you know, the Erbprinz prince to Waldeck und Piermont. And he was, uh, he's related to terrible crimes in the, uh, the concentration camp Buchenwald, yeah. And they just kept him prisoner, you know, a couple of years and they just let him out, eh? Look here, there, there he is, he was a general, SS Obergruppenführer. Yeah, SS Obergruppenführer, a general, eh? And a prince. This this is very important, people. This is very, very important. He had a nice life after the war. Eh? Yeah. Well, that's what the nobility has always been doing throughout the centuries. Well, haven't they now, eh? Oh, 
jolly good fox hunting in Afghanistan, wasn't it? A jolly good sport, isn't it? And, and look here. It's got some the Nazi bird here on his chest. This is the royal one here with the Nazi bird, eh? Now why does he has this and the other ones don't, eh? And the royal Nazi bird, eh? So with Hitler's Prinzen Erlass, the German nobility didn't have to risk their necks affronting dangerous armies. So they could join Hitler's terror army for the soft targets called the SS. And believe it or not, all this, what I just told you, can be find, found at the Union Crest between Old World Order Royals and New World Order Templars and their pale whores at the cover of a UK passport, therefore called United Kingdoms in plural or singular. All the way back to where we started, because with these snakes ruling over us, the endings usually are like their beginnings. And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Behold a pale horse on Iswaki Malipons. The evil ones don't want you to think bad of it. Behold the pale horse.